Today. today, I'm doing a video on how to make a simple Python desktop application using the Qt libraries. To do this, I'm using two pieces of software. I'm using Qt Creator and I'm using PyCharm. So with Qt Creator, I'm going to use it to make the graphical user interface. And I'm actually only going to use one element of it, which is called Qt Designer. And if you can get that application on its own, Qt Designer, that's all you need. But it seems that they're bundling them together um, once you get to Python 3.7. So I can't just use pip to get Qt Designer. But that's okay. I'm just going to use the entire IDE here just to use the graphical component. This, um, this IDE Qt Creator is specifically made for the Qt libraries, but aimed at using it with C++. There, are some, there is some basic functionality there for Python. But it's, yeah, it's very rudimentary, so I'm just going to use Qt Creator to create the GUI, and then I'm going to switch over to PyCharm to do my Python development and editing. Of course, you can use any editor you like. It's just uh, Py PyCharm's very good with Python, and so that's why I use it. Okay, so let's start off. We'll go to the Qt Creator menu here and say File, and we'll say New File or Project. And the type of file we're going to make is a Qt designer form. So with this, you can see the other one's Qt designer with form class. So that'll generate C++ code for us. We don't want that. All we want is this single UI file. So we'll choose that. And there's different type of widgets you can do. You can select an individual widget. So you might have multiple widgets within an individual application, or you might have dialog boxes and there's some prefabbed ones here with different layouts. But because we're starting out, we want to have our main window. So that's the one we're going to opt for right now. And we'll give it a name and a location. Uh, I'll choose a folder that I made. Um, I'll just go... There we are. Don't know why I couldn't see that to begin with. Example Qt GUI. You can see there's nothing in it. It's just a folder that I had ready to go. So I'm going to put main window.ui um, into that directory there. Now if you're using version control such as git, you could select that here, but we're not going to use version control for this. So we'll just select done. Okay, and so this is where we start to make our GUI. I'm just going to resize this because I don't need something that big. Now, because this is a main window, you can see that it's inserted a menu bar and a status bar for us. We're not going to need either of those, so I'm just going to remove them for now. Okay, and here's our graphical user interface. It's just bare at the moment. So I'm going to do, as I said, a very simple one. I'm going to put two buttons on here. And for when I'm referencing it later, I'll just call this one yes. For when I'm referencing it later, I want to give it a name. So by default, it's that one's called push button, and I imagine this one's push button too. Yep, which it is. So I'll go back to this one, and I'll rename this, because I'm going to want to be able to access it from my Python code later. So I'll call that yes button. And then I'll go to this button here. I'll change the text in it to say no. And that one, I'm going to call it no button so I know which one I'm referencing. I'm also going to put a label in here. Oops. So there's a label there. And to begin with, I'll say, oh, nothing has yet changed. So the idea of this application, super simple application, all that I'm going to do is when the user clicks on yes, this text here will change from nothing has yet changed to yes is the answer, and when I click on no, this text will change to the answer is no. Now, if I have, if I create this now, and the user opens up this application, and they decide to resize the window, you can see the elements in the side of the window aren't moving or changing dynamically with the resizing the window. So that's not particularly helpful. So I'm just going to show you, again, a very simple version of what we call layout managers. I'm going to use a useful little tool here called these, these little springs here, horizontal springs. And I'll just put these in here and then I'll start, start to explain to you how the layout manager works and why I've got these little springs in here. 
So I'm just going to place a few around. Okay. So what I'll do is a layout manager that allows me to group things together so that they can work in a certain way. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select each of these items and I'm going to put them in a horizontal layout manager. So when I press that button, it groups them all as one item. And you'll see if I stretch it, the springs grow and shrink horizontally. When I go up and down, it just stays in the middle there. Um, but we're going to have other items pushing against that as well. So I'll just leave that there for the moment. I'll do the same with these three items here. That's the same deal. And then I want to grab these three springs and these two groups together. They get a bit tricky to click on because you've got to click right on the edge. So what I'll do is I'll go over here and select them on this side instead. Make it easier. And then I'll select these ones here. Now I'm going to put them into a vertical layout manager. And you can see they're all together now and they're resizing nicely. So I've got the layout manager worrying about all that for me so I don't have to do anything tricky. And lastly I'm going to attach that whole section together to the background by clicking on the background and just doing a grid layout which means it'll grip to this larger canvas here. So you can see now we've got something that looks a bit more like we want. And for the moment that's all I want to do for this application so we're actually finished at this point with the designing. Now obviously you can see there's lots of elements down here like um, push buttons and radio um, and checkboxes, radio buttons, checkboxes, um, list views where we can list things, different columns, there's lots and lots of different things we can do with scroll areas, we can group things together, um, have these tabs and toolbox layouts, there's lots and lots and lots and lots of things we can do in here. A really useful tool set there, but we're, as I said we're just going to do a really simple one. You can play with all that stuff later. Okay, so as I'm done, I'll say file, save that, make sure that one's all good to go, and I'll close that off. I'm done with that. Now I'm going to use my PyCharm to go open that example Qt GUI folder, and you can see our UI file is there waiting for us. Now that UI file is a whole bunch of UML um, that describes the interface, but that's not really useful for us in our Python. There is a way of using that, but I'm not going to go down that track. I think it's much better just to convert it to Python. So down here, there's this terminal button here, and it's going to open up in this same directory. And I'm going to use PyUIC5 on the main window UI, and I'm going to say convert that. The hyphen O stands for out. This is the file I'm going to output to. And I'm going to put call the output file UI underscore mainwin.py. So that's what I'm going to call the generated file. So if I hit enter on that, that'll convert that UI file to a Python class. And you can see it's just popped up now. So if I click on that, you can see I've got a full Python class in here that's been automatically generated. Now you don't want to go mess with this. So you can say, okay, beautiful, I've got the generated code. This is what I would have manually written out if I didn't have that ability to go in and generate it using Qt Creator. So I'd write all this code out manually, but luckily that, um, that drag and drop interface and that simple command there to convert it generates the Python code we need. But I don't want to edit that because if I ever have to go back and change my UI in any way, it will regenerate this and destroy any changes that I've made. So I'm going to make a third file, um, which will be my actual Python code that I write, and that will be for my main window. Now I've prefaced this one with UI to show that this is the generated UI file. And so when I go and um, create a new file, oh, wait a minute, I'll do it from here. New Python file, I can just call this main win dot, oh, I don't even have to put the dot pi, it'll figure that out because it's a Python file. Okay, and now I've got my main win dot pi and I'm ready to simply import that UI and start coding. And so I can start doing my actions. I'll do that in the follow-up video. So this just gave you a quick idea of how to throw together a user interface, convert it to Python code, and now we've created our file, our Python file ready to go and we've got that UI and we haven't had to write a line of code yet. Now all we're going to do is import that code and start writing our um, actual logic on how the application works, which I'll do in the next video.